Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and uh, today I want to make some paper flowers. There's lots of videos out there making paper flowers. They all use a heavyweight crepe. Um, but if you've never made a flower before and you don't want the expense of going out and buying loads of materials, you can make them quite easily from copier paper. So this is one that I've made earlier. And it's just, it's actually from a 100 gram copier paper. So it's a little bit sturdier than your normal 80 gram. And it's quite nice, but it does just lack a little something. And that little something is the fact that your petals here are completely flat. So I've got a trick so that you can create daisies like this with fluffy pom-pom centers that have got veining on them. And they just, they give almost the look of crepe paper, but they're just made from ordinary bond. And what you do is you make yourself a veining mat, which is basically a blind embossing mat. Now I've done this with lino. You can do it with card, thick mount board card. They don't last as long, I'll be honest. They don't look as nice. And equally, this isn't the most attractive piece of kit that you're gonna have in your craft room, but it does mean that you can add veining to matte papers, glossy papers, you can go completely over the board and mix them up and mix all the colours up. And this is how you make it. Not everybody's got a piece of lino in their uh, craft supplies, I'm aware of that, but you can pick up small pieces of a lino for about a pound. And what I would do is draw your petal shape and I will put a template in the description below for these petals. But this method you can use really, oh, that's gone off the line a bit. You can use it for any shape petal. So, I mean, all these petals I've actually cut out with an electronic cutting machine. Um, and I've not tried cutting crepe on an electronic cutting machine. That's a, that's a demonstration for another day. But once you've drawn it in pencil on your piece of lino, just roughly go around it with a permanent marker so that you can line your petals up in future. Oop, that's just gone a bit off the line there. And then draw yourself a couple of horizontal lines. Mark a point here and here. And draw from that indentation. that indentation and what I'd also suggest you do is just put another little veining line somewhere on the side of your petal Now the reason I've done these two parallel lines is because when you cut your lino, as you're cutting into it, you're going to end up getting quite close. And I don't want that. What I want to do is I'm going to stop this middle line here. It will make your board last longer and it will make your, you know, it will make your lines straighter. So grab yourself a metal ruler and a cutting knife. If you've got lino cutting tools, then great because you can use them. But if you haven't, and you don't want the expense of going out and buying them, you can do it with stuff you have in your craft room. So line up your ruler to that pencil line. I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And you want to extend it from the top of here, just down to that line. And you want to, instead of cutting at a normal 90 degrees, you want to cut at about 45 degrees. Do that a couple of times using a moderate pressure. Don't try and cut deep all the way through all at once. And then line your ruler up again to that cut line. Move it forwards a little bit and again cut at a 45 degree angle. 
because what that should do is you should be able to get a wedge-shaped piece of lino out of there. And then if you just take a small ball-ended tool, you can just clean up the edges of that line. So we'll do the same with the next one. And this one is stopping at that higher line. And lino is actually lovely to cut. I've tried using other things like foam board and, and, and that kind of stuff. You just, you can't seem to get as clean a line on it as you can with lino. Just going to run down there again. If you've got a steady hand, you can, um, you don't even need the ruler. I'm risking doing this like this, but now I've got a line to start. Oh, there you go. And again, just clean it up like that. So continue doing that until you end up with all your lines scored out like this. And then take your petal shape. Line it up to your drawn line. And I wouldn't use the small, I wouldn't use the smallest end of this. You can get quite a decent line just from the thicker end. The other thing I would say, it sounds daft, just get a little bit of grease off your hand. Because that will make the ball-ended tool run more smoothly up your paper. And leaving those pencil lines on here means you can see where your lines start and stop. And if you go a bit skew if it doesn't matter because you can quite easily run over the line again to make it clearer. Now you can make a custom veining board for any shape of petal that you like. But if you've not got that much lino or you've not got that much time, it's very simple to use the same board for a smaller petal. Because they're running at similar angles. which is how I've done this one here. So, I'm not going to sit here and uh, vein 27 petals for you because I already have 27 petals that I've veined previously. And then just to make them have a little bit more life, just run them gently over the blade of a pair of scissors. The closed blade of a pair of scissors is fine. Just to tip the ends of those petals. So there you've got your pile of veined and curled petals. Now you need the disc of card and a liberal amount of glue. And then arrange your petals, I'd say in thirds to start with. and then apply another ring of glue. Now I haven't really given time for these petals to stick to this disc properly. And if you've ever seen any of my other demonstrations, you know I have a serious issue with glue malfunction because I try and do stuff too quickly. So I'm just gonna be really careful how I apply some more glue. And I'm not gonna put these petals directly in the middle of here because I want to make 
a third layer. So I'm just going to put them slightly off on each side. So you've still got a visible gap. And then just to make sure that I don't disturb those petals, I am just going to apply the final petals with their own little dot of glue. I've now actually lost count of how many petals I've stuck on there, but I've got two left over, so let's um, just pop them on there just in case. <laughs> so there you have your flower with your petals virtually stuck down in place. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this over and I'm going to use a needle tool to mark two holes in that card disc. Let's bring it over to the front again and just run it right down in there. And then grab yourself a pom-pom. Now I'm not going to show you how to make a pom-pom but these have been made with a two-part pom-pom maker and if you have a look in some of our older videos there are a couple of demonstrations showing you how you actually use those pom-pom makers to make little hedgehogs or um, rabbits. Darning needle and sew the ends, the tying ends of your pom-pom through those two holes. Ooh. Oh, you know when you just know the petals are going to fall off because the glue hasn't dried. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Pull that up tight. Tie a knot, put your finger on the knot. And secure it with a wreath knot. And I tend to leave the ends of these pom-poms on the flowers because they are a flat flower, so they can be used to decorate a flat surface or you can tie them to, you know, around a post for a wedding display or something like that. And then if you just squeeze them in, you get a nice lift to the petals. And I've found the best way to store these flowers, if you're making lots of them, and you need to keep them to one side without them getting too flat. If you just gather those petals in and you pop a rubber band around there, it will keep them nice and safe. And then when you come to open them out again, it will give them a natural lift to the petals, like on these daisies here. So as I say, there will be a template to download in the link below in the description. And you can make a mat for any petal that you like, any shape petal that you like, just by drawing it onto the lino, drawing your veining lines in pencil and then trimming them at a 45 degree angle with a craft knife. Hope you like that. Hope that's given you some inspiration to decorate your house. Um, thank you very much for watching. And in the meantime, please keep safe and we'll see you again very soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.